So this is a 1981 Honda Moto Compo. And you've probably seen these before on the internet, maybe on Bring a Trailer going for crazy money, but there really isn't any videos from the owner's perspective. So in this video, I wanna do a full breakdown of putting down the handlebars, putting them back up, riding it, Going to get some gas, because I actually have no gas, so we're gonna see how much it costs to fill this thing up. Along with all the weird little quirks of what makes this bike so special. And hopefully by the end of this video, if you have no idea what a Honda Moto Compo is, you now see why they go for so much money, because these are very expensive bikes. But at the same time, it's almost like the ultimate JDM toy. So with that being said, Let's learn about the Moto Compo. So the story behind this guy is I got it from Psycho Refinery, AKA Mr. Moto Compo out in Austin, Texas. I paid 6,500 for this one, which I know sounds like a lot of money, but to be honest, it's one of those things where, what do you compare it to? What bike can fit in your trunk? What bike can you go to car meets? What bike can you pull out and really be one of the coolest people there? And more importantly, this is from 1981 and it looks like this. When we get outside, you'll see a better example of it, but it's in flawless condition. All the stickers are still intact. The seat is nice. And then I got one of the ones that have all the new parts. So this one has the fluids flush, a brand new battery, the carburetor's rebuild, new brakes, the tires are basically brand new. This is a turnkey Moto Compo. This isn't one of the as-is ones. And I wanted to get one that I knew was just perfect. I know I didn't want to have any issues. Not that I don't know about bikes, but for me, if I'm gonna be driving this thing all over the place, I want one that I know is just gonna have no issues. And that's why I elected to get this yellow one. Here's a look at the outside. You can see these are the carrying points. That's basically the only place that you wanna lift the Moto Compo up. Back here it says untouchable and it has these little grooves because it does not want you to lift it up here because you could break this plastic, you could break the tail light and that is not good. Here you have some more carrying points. Carrying points, it has some of these latches there. Here's the step. Not really too much to show you. The headlight is there. Here are the brakes and tires. It says Honda there. And this is something that I learned about. I'll show you guys that when we get outside. But this is pretty much it for the outside. I'm gonna break it down in a second and show you some more. But here's the seat. I'm going to turn this. So this is kind of your little like center console, I guess you can see. It's kind of your heart to everything. So you pull that back and then this is your gas cap. That's your fuel gauge. As you can see, I'm running very low. You turn it like this. And then there is the itty bit amount of gas that I have left. Close it back like this. That arrow points it down. This is your two-stroke oil. You can see the carburetor. Let me get my phone, you probably can see a little better. Yeah, so here's a look of everything down here. There's your carb. There's the fuel tank. There's your choke. You can see that there's some oil, I believe, right there. You can see the VIN number back here. There's your seat. You can see that the horn is over here, right there. And then here's a look down here. No issues, no leaks. Here's another look at the engine and trans. Everything looks pretty good. Keep in mind, this is a 1981 bike and look at that exhaust. Literally the size of my finger, which is so crazy to see. So right now the bike is on lock, meaning I'm unable to turn the wheel. Nothing is happening, but if I put the key in and put it to off, now I can do this. So that's something ignition wise, but let's keep it on off and I'm now gonna fold the handlebar. So I'll show you guys that. Show you guys honestly one of the cool things about the bike. So the way you put the seat down is like this, just like that. You put it back up by doing this. That's also the kill switch that we'll learn a little bit more later. But the way you do it, honestly, is you just spin this. That comes out and it rests right here. You see this little groove, this resting point right there. So I'm going to now do my best to tuck it because this is 1981. I'm going to do something like this. Nice and secure. What you want to do is fold your mirror now. This is going to go like this. Just like that, point it down. We're gonna twist this guy too. I find it easier to do this one too because this big um, speedometer kind of makes it a lot harder to if you do it the other way. But what you wanna do is turn this guy. This one's a little harder because the mirror kind of goes right there. Actually, I need to turn this because I don't want it to crack. So do it like this, facing inward. And now,
that side always gives me a pain but we got it the mirror is basically completely down and then these wires go down just like that so next you want to take your little center console piece bring it over here you can see it has some little lock points right there with this key you can do that open and lock you see the little light sticking out we're gonna leave it on open we're gonna take this put these three teeth right in here Again, be pretty fragile because the last thing we want to do is break anything. But there you go with that. This all snaps into place just like that. And then you would just turn your cleaning lock and boom. There you have it. This is what really makes the Moto Combo so cool because I'll put the camera down and show you. I'm very easily able to lift this thing up. It only weighs 100 pounds, maybe less. I'll get a scale actually. We're going to find the exact weight. But as you can see, it's not too heavy. I'm gonna get a scale right now, actually. And let's find out exactly how much this weighs. So by myself, I am 185. And with this, um, 97 pounds. All right, so it's basically 100. And that's with absolutely no fuel in it. So I would say 100 pounds is pretty correct. So now with the Moto Compo folded, you see this up hour right here? That means you're able to lay it down like this. So when I traveled 27 hours with this in my trunk, I had it laid down like that, for example, with the front tire facing the left side, the passenger seat, and this was on the driver's side for the right-hand drive car, that is. But this was on the right side, and that was on the left side, and I had it laid down just like that. So now what we're gonna do is repeat that same exact process. It's currently on lock. Let's put that to open. This pops right up, put it to the side. Let's pull out the handlebar. Again, remember this thing is, this is your enemy right there, that mirror. But if you do it slowly, push the mirror in at the same time. Nope, doesn't want to come out. I think I'm honestly just going to take my mirror off because realistically it's not like that's going to make any difference on me living or not. But all right, it's out. And now you can see that it has teeth. You can't just put it anywhere. You see how it goes in perfectly right there. If I try to do it like this, it won't let me screw it on. It'll just keep spinning. So it has to go into the teeth like this. And now righty tighty, lefty loosey goes into play. That's done. Pull out this guy. And just like the other side, you see that I can't put it down. I have to turn it a little more like this. And then you feel it go into play. Boom. And now, again, righty tighty. Make sure it's extra tight. And now the bike is ready to go. We can put this back on. Again, we have to do the same exact thing. Open it back up. Put this here. Put that down to its snaps and then lock. And then there you go. There you have your bike. We're ready to take it outside. Let's turn it on. I'm gonna show you guys the choke, the gas right here, and we're gonna ride it about maybe like six, seven blocks, honestly. And we're gonna get some gas at a major gas station. So let's see if we get some fun interactions while we're out there. All right, now that we're outside, hopefully you can really see how beautiful this 1981 relic really is. Look at those brakes, look at the tires. Basically brand new. Of course there's some little imperfections, like stuff like that, but to find one of these in yellow that really pop is hard. Red I feel like is the most common color, and most of the white ones are really like distorted from what I saw, but here we can see how it looks. Now let's start it. So we're gonna put the key on on. When it's on on, now we have some functions like horn works. There's your turn signal. Now we have the backlights tail lights work you have a front brake and a rear brake now we can put the choke up and then right here if you really listen closely maybe you can hear the gas go down that's the gas now on here's step one we're not going to put that one out just yet but here's the other step it's kick start so you go right here and something that I learned from owning this bike is that you cannot start it with the seat down. This is like the kill switch. So if I try to start it right now, nothing will happen. But if I take this off, because you can't put the seat up while it's like that, put the seat up, 
put this guy back now that we have the seat up put this back on on and it should start on one kick and that's why i wanted to get one of the nicer models because i didn't want to keep kicking it over and over and over and have those issues i wanted to add this in the video because i didn't show this earlier but i said that the seat was a kill switch and i'm gonna show you guys exactly what i mean so if i put the bike on make sure everything is good and now the bike as you can see is on if i put the seat down it turns off right away so it really is a kill switch i can put the seat back up and you can see bike is on seat down boom off kill switch starts right up we can fold this back in put our step out here's our headlight so it's on right now and then off with this button you can see that's for light that's for off and that's pretty much it as far as like features go like i mentioned rear brake front brake it's just like a moped 50 cc the kickstand is also right here on the right side you just push it down and then lean the bike back like any old scooter and then it sits up right like that let's go get some gas we're gonna drive this bike kind of far i know this isn't like the best travel bike but this is really a small sample size compared to what i'm really going to be doing but all right let's go let's go on this adventure right now here's a speed run do here do i stay at lights do i get on the sidewalk i'm gonna be an actual person and wait at this light i got my turn signal on we're gonna actually be a real a real moped let me fix my mirror so i'm gonna be a real moped see if i can see behind me wait for this light to turn green we're gonna get some gas i'm really curious to see how much it's gonna take because you can see it's at the red red like see that bar i have little to no gas at all I'm doing this in one hand too to put in perspective so it's not hard to ride it. Don't think you're gonna fall. Realistically, I should just put my feet on the ground and I could do this the entire time. I'm about like 5'9. This bike is like a little toy, honestly, but you don't have to worry about falling. Like, look, these are both my feet on the ground. Alright, I think I can go. Yep, we're out. And we're off. Green light. We out. too it's not as bad as people think like it's not riding a suitcase like all things jdm said it's pretty comfortable you can see we have some shocks there it isn't a very uncomfortable ride would i want to drive this like you know a mile a day or two three miles a day no of course not but for it to be a car to just drive around a car meets with do a little fun stuff like go to a gas station a couple blocks away it isn't bad like i can definitely see why this made so much sense to japan because i'm chilling right now like i'm chilling i could have parked my city somewhere and if i have to scoot like five ten blocks i have no issue with that at all let's cut across let's get some gas make this left right here See how much gas this little scoot's about to take right now. Where should I put it here? Should I put 93? Give it the best of the best. Alright, let's park it up. Let's put our kickstand up. Let's turn it off. Now we gotta remove this. And then here's our gas. Take that over there. You can see I got a little bit in there but it's completely empty as far as the bar goes. All right, let's see. How much gas does the Honda Moto Compo take? I'm gonna put 87. What do you guys think? Over a gallon or under a gallon? Oh, wow, it's already full. Borderline full, look at that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't want to fill it to the top top. Alright, yeah, that's good. <laughs> that was one dollar. So it doesn't even take a gallon. It probably takes half a gallon of gas. As you can see, my bar is pretty much all the way to the top. Alright, so this takes one gallon of gas, which probably lasts you God knows how long. So I think I'm going to end this video here. Here's one last look at the Moto Combo. This thing is very, very cool. Let me know in the comments. Am I crazy for spending this much money on a little bike? Or do you guys agree with me? This is really the ultimate JDM man cave toy. Like after this video, I'm gonna literally carry it up my steps and put it back in my room. Not to mention, honestly, one of the biggest things why I got this bike is I feel like Tokyo and Manhattan are not that different. Like I wanna take this thing to the city. I wanna get on the train. I wanna carry it. I wanna get off in Times Square. I wanna ride it. I wanna get it insured. It's already registered, it has a title and everything but I wanna get it inserted and I wanna actually drive it. You guys see what I did with K-Cars. I drive K-Cars on 10 hour road trips. I wanna do the same thing with this. I wanna drive this from here to like New Jersey, like somewhere crazy and like actually on the roads, like on the real roads. If that has to be a car following me so I don't get run over, maybe that happens, but I wanna really take this thing far. Like I wanna push it to its limits and see, like, you know, bring it back to 1980. If they were doing this back in the 80s, I wanna do it now. But here you go, Honda Moto Campo from 1981. In my opinion, one of the coolest colors. I would definitely love to get more of these. I would love to have all three of them and have some homies ride around with me and we do like a crazy road trip on Moto Compos. So let's see, maybe I won't raffle this one, maybe I will, but catch you guys on the next one. Peace. One last thing actually, something very important. So when I got the Moto Compo and I would turn it off, like I'm about to do right now, right? It would leak gas all over the floor through this little tube right here. So what I've learned is that when you turn the bike off, you have to put it on off. You see off on the gas. And then you have to turn this little knob. Let me see. There's a knob. You see this little knob right here? This guy? You have to loosen this and then all the gas will come out. That's that right there. You want to leave that open until it completely leaks out. You know, not too long. Probably waste, I don't know, 10 cents of gas. So that's it completely loose. Then you want to tighten it back up. Grab yourself a napkin or something. And then just dab that up. That way when you go inside an establishment. Because I was wondering like every time I turn the bike off. It's leaking gas. There's no way that's what they did back in the day. So you want to grab yourself a napkin. Just dab this guy right here. Make sure no more gas comes out. And then now you're able to park inside of an establishment, park inside of your little business office, and you don't got to worry about smelling like gas everywhere. That's very key. I could not leave that out of the video. That was probably my main important thing that I had to learn about this bike because I was wondering, like, you know, if I drive to someone's house, I can't just have gas leaking all over the place. So you got to open that up, let all the gas come out of the little extra tank, and then boom. You're ready to go. You're ready to go on adventures. That is key. That's where we're going to end the video. That's probably the most, one of the most important things I learned about this bike. But there you go. 81 Moto Compo. Greatest thing I ever bought. Remember the name. This is way before the fame.